The U.S. is preparing to send additional combat aircraft to the Middle East amid rising tensions in the region, the New York Times writes. According to the newspaper, the plan stems from the possibility of an Iranian strike on Israel following the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh, head of the political bureau of the Palestinian movement Hamas in Tehran. A U.S. military official told the paper that American forces in the Middle East were taking necessary measures to increase combat readiness. How many planes to send is still being worked out, the New York Times noted. Lloyd Austin, U.S. Defense Secretary, has ordered adjustments to U.S. military posture designed to improve U.S. force protection, to increase support for the defense of Israel, and to ensure the United States is prepared to respond to various contingencies, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh said in a statement. Austin directed additional warships that can shoot down ballistic missiles and fighter jets to the region as well as to Europe, she said. The U.S. already has other military resources in the region, such as the USS Wasp amphibious assault ship that can help with quick responses and possible evacuations. Three other officials, two Israeli and one American, told AI Monitor that high-ranking U.S. military officials in the Middle East were caught off guard by the assassination of Haniyeh. Iranian officials have said they will consult with their proxies before taking action. Two U.S. military sources who spoke to security briefing on condition of anonymity said conventional strikes like Iran's April 13th massive drone and missile barrage against Israel are likely. Lebanese Hezbollah, Iran-backed militias in Iraq and Yemen's Houthi rebels may also join in the anticipated attack, particularly given the recent high-profile Israeli strikes on their turf. This time, however, the barrage may be heavier in a bid to overwhelm US-led attempts to collectively defend Israeli airspace. The fusillade of more than 300 missiles and drones fired by Iran and its proxies in April were largely intercepted by Israeli air defenses backed by US, UK, France and Jordanian fighter aircraft, as well as US Navy destroyers all armed with early warning intelligence from Gulf states. On July the 31st, Hamas reported Haniyeh's death in an Israeli strike on his residence in Tehran, where he had attended the inauguration ceremony of Iranian President Masoud Pezeshkian. The al Hadath TV channel reported that Haniyeh had been killed in a direct missile strike. Musa Abu Mazouk, deputy chief of the Hamas political bureau, vowed that Haniyeh's killing would not go unanswered. A source in the Israel Defense Forces told TASS that the Israeli military did not comment on reports of Haniyeh's death. Chinese and Russian bombers flew together into a U.S. air defense zone in Alaska on July the 24th, prompting U.S. and Canadian forces to intercept and escort them. The clash does not pose a threat of serious escalation, but it is a reminder of China's expanding air power, the Telegraph reports and highlights the high stakes as the Americans rush to develop countermeasures. When two Chinese Xi'an H-6 bombers and two Russian Tu-95 bombers flew into Alaska's air defense zone on July the 24th, U.S. and Canadian Air Force fighter jets scrambled to meet them. The publication noted that interceptions of Russian aircraft are commonplace. Interceptions of Chinese aircraft are rarer and for a very simple reason. When it comes to long-range aviation, the PLAAF is decades behind the Russian or U.S. Air Force. As the publication noted, as Chinese bombers improve, they are flying farther and more frequently into the Pacific Ocean. It is no secret that these long-range sorties are training for war. If China ever makes good on decades of threats to invade Taiwan and the U.S. comes to Taiwan's aid, expect Chinese bombers to target U.S. Navy carrier groups at sea and potentially U.S. Air Force bases throughout the Pacific, the publication wrote. Stopping these bombers will be the top priority for American fighter pilots protecting the U.S. fleet and bases, the publication concluded. On July the 24th, it was reported that the North American Aerospace Defense Command detected and tracked four Russian military aircraft operating in the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone. The Russian aircraft remained in international airspace and did not enter U.S. or Canadian sovereign airspace. 
Russian activity in the Alaskan air defense zone occurs regularly and is not considered a threat. The statement said 